Welcome to BCS, the Chartered Institute for IT. Uh, today we're looking at the crossover of two particular issues. The first is entrepreneurialism, which uh, BCS has been looking at very much more closely recently with the launch of its BCS Entrepreneur Specialist Group. And the second is the role of women in IT. Uh, eSkills uh, UK reports seem to indicate that the number of women in IT has not changed significantly for quite some time now. So to discuss these issues of women and IT and entrepreneurialism, uh, we have with us Maggie Berry, the Managing Director of Women in Technology. Welcome, yep. Maggie. And uh, we have Elizabeth Varley, Co-Founder and CEO of Tech Hub. Welcome, Elizabeth. Thank you. Uh, perhaps we could just start off uh, by asking this question. Uh, what are the barriers to women in entering the IT sector generally? I'd like to start with that one, Maggie. Yes, I can. Um, I think there are a, a number of different barriers. Um, none of them are insurmountable, but they all add up and can create, create roadblocks. Um, I think there's a perception about what an IT career actually looks like, that it's geeky and very, very male-dominated and that you'll just be sitting in a dark room coding somewhere, whereas in reality, the difference, you know, the, it's, it's very different from that. Mm. There are great jobs in technology and we need to be doing a lot more to publicise those jobs and make more people aware of them. Um, I think there's a piece around education, I think there's a piece around women returning to work after they've left technology careers. There are lots of different things and I'm sure that we'll be discussing them more yeah. as we move through the, through the chat this afternoon. What's your, what's your view on that, Elizabeth? Well, I think, um, I think there are so many different opportunities now and uh, in a way we do ourselves a disservice by, by still referring to it as, as IT. I, I think you know, a lot of young people particularly probably wouldn't necessarily know what information technology really means because technology careers are now around um, you know, internet, games, social media, that sort of thing. I think um, the way we talk about these things um, can sound quite corporate rather than sounding quite fun and creative, which is what technology careers really can be. And I think we, particularly with regards to women, but also to you know to everybody, we need to provide uh, really interesting and exciting role models so that people can say, oh, that's oh, they do something really cool and interesting. I, I could do that, or I'd like to do that, or something similar to that. So I think we have opportunities around um, around communication and education. Okay. Um, now, uh, working in the area that you do, do you find these same problems? I mean, 17 or 18 percent women in, in, in IT sounds a bit pathetic, doesn't it? Is, is that same problem in the sort of startup arena? We do see um, fewer women. Uh, starting up technology businesses um, and I think it's it's for the same reasons as seeing fewer women in corporate technology careers um, is just around the the legacy of uh, of education and the perception that science technology um, maths and that sort of thing were things for boys things for men when um, when you're young and, and looking at things that you might like to do. Um, I think what we're seeing now is more women getting involved in that because it's it's more about uh, the ubiquity of technology generally. So if you're using your phone every day, you're using interesting apps on your phone every day, and you start thinking, well, this doesn't quite meet my needs and I can't find something that's exactly what I want. Well, maybe, maybe I could get involved in changing that or making something new without necessarily thinking about it as, as, as a massive career issue or a, or a big change because it's just a thing that I use on my phone all the time. And I think talking about it from that perspective, change the things that you use to the things that you want. Right. That's a, a, a really good way of encouraging more women to start their own businesses or, or, or work on things as a hobby on the side. Yes. Now, um, uh, you, you both have this slightly different background. You, you had the more sort of corporate uh, view here, uh, Maggie. Um, obviously, Elizabeth, you have the startup y sort of view. Is your feeling from, from your perspective that there are actually more women in, in the startup area now, perhaps than in, in the sort of corporate environments that you're used to? No, I mean, I think. I suppose perhaps you don't cross over much, I don't know. I don't, um, well, we were. We, yes and no. Uh, yes, <laughs> I'd say that. So I have a network of women who work in technology in all sorts of areas of IT, through from women who are working in your support, app support roles, through to women who are building, um, you know, global trading systems within financial services. You know, they're doing a vast range of jobs, and I think that's one of the issues, I think, for the IT profession to kind of put, uh, you can't just put a finger on exactly what an IT job is. It's so broad. Um, and my women are doing lots of different things. Some of them are working in corporate, 
and running some things on the slide that the view is maybe in a few years time but that if they can get that off the ground and it can become a commercial yeah. uh, a commercial product or a commercial service that their view is that they will then leave corporate life and and move into an entrepreneurial space and there certainly is uh, research around women leaving corporate life because it just doesn't suit them and they can't get the flexibility they need and actually doing, doing your own thing means that you can and you can build you can build your job around your life but actually the reality is and I think when I talk to a lot of women who do run their own business businesses it's full on it's it's not a nine to five job and it's certainly not a part-time initiative um, and I think that's maybe why some of them start it while they're still in a corporate yeah. a corporate world. It's it's funny. So many people think if I start my own company, I can I can work only the hours I want. <laughs> what you realise very quickly is that when you're running your own thing, you work all the hours. Yes. There is no, it's all you know, it's yeah, it's it's totally consuming. Yes. And I think um, that's uh, an interesting dichotomy about it. Certainly in terms of the view, is that people think well. If I do something that's my own thing, I can fit it around other stuff. Whereas often the reality is that a corporate environment with its um, leave provisions and, and that sort of thing and, and more structured hours and you know and I know that lots of people don't work there, you know, a lot of hours, um, that can actually be more conducive to um, to to having more time off or or, or Less easy to fit things around your yeah. your life, um, less malleable sometimes. But actually, um, leave structured, paid leave, that sort of thing, can make it easier in in other ways. So it's it's a tricky situation. Yeah. Now, in a totally non-scientific uh, way, is your feeling that perhaps there's more than eighteen or twenty percent of of the people you see going through a tech company are women? No, okay. there no, isn't. Okay, I so, so. That, well, I, I mean, yeah. I don't have, um, I don't have official figures, and, and referring specifically to Tech Hub, mm. not sort of the, um, uh, the tech startup industry generally, but even then, um, I, I wouldn't have thought it would be more than twenty percent. I think we at Tech Hub have a pretty good um, number of, of women entrepreneurs uh, coming in. I think part of that might be um, because we deliberately focus on having a very sort of um, gender free environment. I don't know if it's part of the fact that the organisations uh, run by a woman, we have a lot of female staff, um, so perhaps the environment is subtly different uh, to, to somewhere that, that might be more male dominated. However, we do find that a huge proportion of our members are men, um, but we don't really see a big divide on that. I think sort of everybody's just kind of one of the guys in a way and I use guys in a non-gender, yes. in a non-gendered way um, because when you're in the startup world most of the time everybody's in t-shirts and jeans, everybody's working long hours, everybody's dedicating their whole lives and everything that they have to their to their baby, this, you know, this business that they're working on. And so I think it becomes um, quite a non-gendered environment. It's about how good you are, how interesting your business is, how well you network with other people, um, but less about whether you're male or female or, or anything like that. You know, yeah. we have a lot of um, collaboration, we have a lot of friendships forming and that sort of thing, and that's really ungendered. So perhaps we, we could make a slightly unscientific statement there, that perhaps the, the environment's a little bit more conducive. Uh, to uh, to encourage w women to work in that area. So the question is, if the numbers are still pretty much the same, um, again, you know, we're, we're working generally here, aren't we? Uh, what can we do to encourage uh, women a little bit more into uh, into IT generally and into uh, the startup arena? Maggie. I mean, I, I personally feel one of the areas that we need to focus on is very much the pipeline of young talent coming through. Um, not to say that we're not interested in more experienced women or anything like that, but. Um, for me, I'm, I'm interested in trying to attract more girls to consider studying the right kind of subjects that can then lead on to a computer science and technology career. Um, but obviously, we're interested in boys as well. We want both coming both coming through. I mean, the IT industry is a growing industry for the UK, and we, we want to see more young people interested in it and considering it as a career option for them. So I think there's quite a big piece around connecting young people to people who are already in the industry and enabling them to hear from what could be inspirational role models. Um, so there are a lot of projects 
things like STEM ambassadors or girls in IT projects or the Digi Girls programs that Microsoft run, which connects young people uh, to the industry professionals. And ideally, I think the evidence shows that you need the professionals maybe to be not too far apart in terms of if age, because that's they can relate to that. Um, maybe somebody who's five, ten years older than, but maybe more than that, it's it's maybe too um, too far apart. So I think there's a big piece around in. in inspiring the generation coming up but also around careers advice at school and making them aware of all the opportunities available including very much around around what's available in the entrepreneur space for graduates coming out of university I think there's um, uh, Maggie's absolutely right uh, additionally I think there are great opportunities to uh, make it less about um, school and the subjects that you choose and more about trying something for fun. I mean, so many great entrepreneurs and, and great technology professionals generally are fantastic because they're often self-taught. They fiddle around with something that's of interest to them specifically that's to do with something fun or intriguing rather than a structured program uh, at school, a structured you know, class that also teaches you things that you find tedious at the time. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think encouraging playing around, encouraging fun, I mean, the, when you, when you see uh, the entrepreneurs at Tech Hub, they, they work really hard, but it's also fun, you know, it's, it's exciting. It's saying, hmm, what happens if I did that? Oh, that's what happens. You know, oh, that was terrible, but you know, I tried it and, and it was really interesting, and it meant I learned something else. And and I think um, that's something that that we should start looking at. But absolutely, that's about role models and opportunities. Something that that we'll be working on um, at Tech Hub uh, around a, a youth program is about getting those entrepreneurs who are very close in age to um, to young people. We're focusing on sort of 16 to 24 people who are um, perhaps. Jobless, or or you know, don't have the right kind of skills um, to find work, and to run some really sort of deep sessions with entrepreneurs who are 23, 24, and running a games company. You know, yeah. we have one company that does um, Facebook games, and that's obviously something that's really accessible mm. for your average 15-year-old who, no doubt, spends. A substantial amount of time on Facebook so they get it they get the concept they play games they they do that sort of thing and it's about saying hey I'm 23 I run a company of seven people who all do what I think is important and I get to run my own life and make my own decisions and create a job for myself that's exactly what I want and so I think um, making it much more individualized is a really interesting way to sort of say it's not just about the subjects that you're going to choose at school it's about what do you really want to do with your life yeah. do you want to spend all day playing playing games well you can do that if you want to make them as well I mean that, that's interesting uh, that you bring up the, the, the school sort of area because one of the things that often comes up in these sorts of discussions and that BCS have debated in the past is the problem with the, the school curriculum in terms of technology specifically and the fact that things like computer science don't get a look in or people if they think of computer science they still think of running word and excel and so forth is there would there be a gender difference in engaging boys and girls in that, that more creative interesting stuff that un undoubtedly happens in computer science or with your example perhaps of someone coming in and lecturing them on Facebook games and how they work would actually would that actually just engage all of them well I think we're going to see more of that sort of thing um, happening because as of September this year um, IT in schools is no longer going to be a mandated yeah. curriculum and so this is a massive exciting opportunity um, I was at the, the Times Education Festival um, a, a month or so ago and there was a lot of discussion about, okay, well, what, what are the opportunities now? And I think there, there were teachers who were really worried about the fact that how am I going to, to teach these 14, 15-year-olds who probably know more about this than I do? Mm. And the solution is to say, get people from industry or get those, uh, those young people who are really advanced in their knowledge to, to, to help you, to, to, set, to help you devise something that people can get involved with. Make it much more student-led and, and individualised and more like the world of work where you work in teams and people come up with great ideas and they get integrated or thrown out or mm. that sort of thing. And don't worry too much about, you know, hitting certain standards in an industry 
West standards change constantly and things just change so Another rapidly. Issue that we haven't got time to address today, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a good point, exactly. isn't it? What, what, what's your perspective on that one, then, Maggie? I mean, I think there's, there's so much that we can do, and I think certainly within computing education, this is hopefully going to change now. So the curriculum, you know, I think there's definitely a need for teaching user skills at school, but now it's, you know, not just using Word, but creating the next word and um, giving the kids permission to do that kind of thing. And I think mm. you mentioned earlier about, you know, when you're developing something and if I click this button, what happens? Oh, it, oh it's broken, but that's okay, I can backtrack. And I think there is some anecdotal evidence to suggest that girls in schools find that quite difficult to break things and take them apart when actually they want everything to be... Um, my daughter's find quite it quite easy to break things. <laughs> well, I, I think maybe in terms of, you know, if you're putting forward, say, your curriculum or your, your project work and you want everything yeah. to be really um, neat and tidy and beautiful, and I think there is definitely some evidence to suggest that girls find it harder to, to go in and really mm. kind of really play about with the tech. But yes, you're right. Mm. Get, getting in the industry, and I think industry does want to help. I talked to a lot of employers who would really like to engage mm. with schools, and I think, say, through the Computing at Schools group, there, there will be lots more connections. Um, I th and I think with the growth of social media and being able to connect much more easily to people, it's, it's much easier to share ideas and share, share content and cross um, county boundaries between different schools and that kind of thing. So the, so the, the piece around the schools is really important because going back to your question about what can we do to try and change the number of women working in IT, another group that I'm really interested in are returners to work. So these are women with science, engineering, technology qualifications who've probably worked in the industry but have taken a career break most likely to bring up a family. So not just going out on maternity leave mm -hmm. for six, 12 months, but actually have left the industry maybe for five, excuse me, for five to 10 years. And I am convinced that this, this is a group of women in the UK with technology skills. Yes, they're out of date and they need upskilling and bringing up to date with everything. But this is a group of women that the industry could reach, reach out to. Mm. Um, and I'd love to see companies almost uh, developing a, a graduate recruitment program but aimed at returners to work mm. so bringing on a cohort of returners together so that they can they have a group of buddies when they join and, and not just expecting them to hit the ground running but up providing some training courses um, definitely around technology new tools that have come out different initiatives that are running but also around some things around confidence and being back in the workplace and you know there are women out there with tech qualifications that are not being yeah. utilised, and that is a it's a massive untapped pool for industry yeah. entrepreneurs um, and industry. Entrepreneurs, though, yeah, because uh, you know these these obviously these women have got a lot more life experience, haven't they? As well, perhaps more confidence in, in themselves. Perhaps there's a little pool of entrepreneurial spirit there. Absolutely, and. I think you know that there are opportunities also for the intrapreneurs, those who are, are really focused on innovation within a corporate environment and allowing that sort of thing to flourish. And the people who are sort of coming back into an environment, they're, they're seeing it with fresh eyes, they're upskilling and learning something new and being excited and inspired by the fact that, wow, things have really changed. And yeah. rather than looking at it as, well, your skills are out of date and you're going to have to get you know, back up to, you know, up to a certain standard and that sort of thing, it's about saying, OK, you have the right kind of mind, the right kind of approach, the right kind of understanding of technology issues. Let's see what new and interesting stuff we can do because you're new to the company or you're you're mm. new to this sort of role um, or you're coming back into a role that you've done before but but there are so many different opportunities now mm. um, this is it, it, it's a shame that our that historically our our education system and and our culture is about fitting in and is about this is the way things are done and you know I, I I spoke at an event a while ago and said okay so how many people in this room have heard the phrase oh no we don't do it like that or oh, th that's that's not the way this works yes. and you know all all the hands went up at some point between sort of their, their childhood and, and wherever they were now um, at the same time companies are saying we want innovation. We want the next exciting product. We, you know, and so that's a real dichotomy, where we may have an opportunity where you're you're bringing people in with fresh eyes, either young people coming in or uh, returners to work, um, or or even you know people who are, uh, are further on in their careers, perhaps older um, and looking to make a career change. Mm. 
they can sort of say, well, I've never seen this before, but it, it strikes me that, <laughs> and mm. we should be encouraging this yes. sort of thing. Um, yes, we need to, to get certain things done, and yes, you know, companies have plans and that sort of thing, but create that opportunity for innovation and excitement, yes. um, and people will, you know, give them the permission to try and fail.